In this lecture, we are going to talk about declaring, initializing and accessing array elements. The topic name is single dimensional arrays. So normal arrays with a single index that we define are called as single dimensional arrays. In the next lecture, we are going to check what are multi-dimensional arrays as well. But for this lesson, let us keep our scope limited to single dimensional arrays. So let us first check how we can declare arrays. So syntax is like this. You need to specify your data type like in float or char. Then you need to add your variable name. So all the standard rules which apply to declare a variable will also be applicable to declare array names. And then inside of square bracket, you need to specify array size. So here is one example. I'm declaring an array of type integer, naming it as marks and I am specifying array size as 7. So I am declaring collection of 7 integer variables marks 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on till marks 6. So total 7 elements. Similarly, in the second example, I am declaring an array of type float, naming it as averages and setting array size as 10. So it will be an array of 10 float variables. So once declaration is done, let us see how we can initialize arrays. Here I'm declaring an integer array as marks, initializing it with setting data size as seven. And to initialize an array after equal to sign, you can specify all the possible values inside of curly braces. So for integer array of seven, I have specified seven integer variables over here. Alternatively, if you are going to specify explicit seven values, then you can skip specifying array data size. So compiler will automatically initialize array marks with the data size of seven. Hence the compiler will allocate seven memory locations to store these data values. So when these type of declarations are done, then your arrays are stored sequentially like this. So this 10, 20, 30 are data values and these are address locations. So if integer requires four bytes of data, then this address location plus four plus four plus four and so on will be total storage required for your declared arrays. Here is another example where I have declared a character array with data size as two, naming it as options and I'm initializing it with T and F, which is short form for true and false. Also notice that I have specified these values inside of single quote because those are character values. Now let us check how we can access array elements. Array elements can be accessed via their index value. So by specifying an index, you can access that particular array element from the collection. So in our previous examples where we have initialized array marks, so this is my index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and six. So marks three is representing value 40. So in this statement, compiler will print 40. Similarly, in this arithmetic statement, marks zero is representing 10, marks one is representing 20, and marks three is representing 30. So 60, which is result of this addition, will be stored into total. You can also traverse array elements using another variable like to traverse all array elements, I'm using a variable i, initializing it to zero, and I'm writing a condition where i is less than seven. So, so this loop will be performed in the iterations zero, one, two, till six, because six is less than seven, that is the maximum possible value for which the condition will hold true. Once i is incremented to seven, seven less than seven, which will be a false condition. So this for loop will terminate. So for these seven iterations, what we are doing, we are adding marks into previous value of total and storing the result again into total. So in the next iterations, total gets updated. So in this for loop, what we are doing, we are traversing this whole array collection and adding these each element. So at the end of this program, total will have total of all these elements. So at the end of this for loop, total will have addition of all these data values. In the next lecture, we will check few programs on single dimensional arrays.